Now once the cabinets are done, you're ready for countertops. Nick Burke is going to be handling our templating for us. We've seen Luan strips and digital cameras used, but Nick's system is all computerized and laser based. Well, one thing about fabricating countertops is you really need some exact measurements because once the granite's cut and it comes out on the site, there's no scribing or kind of uh, recutting it. So Nick has this great computerized device here set up to pretty much lay out the perfect template. Why don't you kind of step us through how it works? Okay, what this is is the LT55. It's a laser templating system that's hooked up to a computer, to a CAD program. Mm -hmm. What it does is it shoots a laser beam against whatever we're shooting and reflects back and that way it can judge the distance between two points that we shoot. What these blocks represent is the front of the cabinets. And basically what you're doing then are laying out lines when they intersect you know you've got the corner of your cabinet. Correct. It draws it right up. This is where all of the raw edges of the countertop will be. So when they get my drawing back at the shop it's a workable drawing for drafting to clean up and then they'll program the CNC's and away it goes. Okay. When you're working with natural stone like we are, it's important to pick out all of your sinks and faucets ahead of time so that the fabricators can make the necessary cutouts. With the system that Nick has, we can give him a list of everything that we're using. In the back of the shop, they can download everything they need to make all of the slabs. So that process is already underway. Let's take a look and see how it's going. Well, it should be interesting to see all the templating that Nick did on our cabinets gets cut with their water cutting technology here. Now Todd Akins is going to be showing us around. So Todd, this is our Typhoon Bordeaux slab, right? Yep. So now working with this stuff is not like a carpenter that has a big old hunk of plywood, you cut it off and you just match it together with whatever. Here you have to take all this movement of the stone into consideration, right? Exactly. Uh, first things we want to look at are any you know, fissures and any fills that might be in the stone, um, any lines that are going through it, things that you might want to avoid, things that you want to make sure are in your stone. The other thing you're looking at is the movement. That movement going across here, there's a lot of things going on here. Yeah. When you have a seam, that movement's going to be prevalent and you have to take that into consideration. So what's the first step in making sure that that turns out right? At this point we would take a slab in to our photo area and do a photo rendering of it. The second slab that will actually be marrying up to this piece will be photoed as well. That photo will do size and scale and then we can put our templates on it and figure out how we're going to cut it. So once all the photos have been taken of the slabs out in the yard, then those are imported in the computer. Mark Evenson, who's a CAD designer, will take those photos and start working them into something they can use out in the shop. Now why don't you show us how you go about doing that? So once uh, the photos are taken, we bring this into the software we have. We also bring the CAD drawings in also. Mm -hmm. This is the center island for this particular project. I can bring these in and drag them into these slabs here. So what we're trying to do is manipulate these pieces so, as you can tell, all the graining and stuff, we try and match seams up. Mm -hmm. This is a book match. They basically cut it, they open it up and polish the side so the grains are like yeah. opening up a book. And so you will then put this into your computer program and this is what's sent out to the shop and the guys start using that information mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the shop floor. That is correct. So we'll bring that slab in that we took the photo of earlier. We'll set it up on our overhead crane put it on our saw water jet. All the big straight line cuts are going to be done with the saw portion of that and all the nesting cuts and radius cuts will be done with the water jet. And that water jet you know, cranks water up to 60,000 psi, mixes it with a little bit of garnet, shoots it right through the stone. Yeah, it's amazing to watch that thing work and the saw is used just because it's much more efficient and faster for the straight Higher cuts. speed, more efficient use. Once everything's cut, anything that would have to be laminated goes into our lamination area. That's where the edge lamination and the glue is put together and clamps are put on. From there it would move on to our CNC's where the final edge and sink cutouts and each piece would have to be put on. Talk to us about how that CNC works. Uh, basically there's uh, three cutting heads that will come in and cut everything and a fourth head that kind of puts a little bit of a polish on it. Any sizing would be done so the seams are fit on that CNC. We've got actually seven standard edge profiles, um, but you need typically four different cutting heads for each edge profile. And there are a number of profiles that need up to seven heads. So talk to us a little bit about the last step here and how you get this stuff so smooth. Uh, basically it's a six to eight step process depending on colors. Um, what we're doing is going from a coarse grit polishing head to a fine grit polishing head. Basically there's nothing on there to give it any more polish than just natural grinding, just like you would a wood surface. Once that grinding's done, 
We'll go in and we'll set the seams, do a dry fit on the seam area, and then wax it and seal it as needed. So this baby's ready to head out to the site then? Yep, sealed up and ready to go. Can't wait to see it out there. Well, thanks so much yep, for the thank help. Thank you. This, is, this has been great.